Hey guys, welcome back to Rule the World. Last episode, we built Eldrafin's Tower. That's the huge thing you see behind me. We spent a long time on it, and I'm sure Barum's a little bit upset because, you know, we, we didn't really neglect him, but definitely his house is much smaller than Eldrafin's Tower. She's happy with it, though. She loves it, and, uh, and we've decorated it a bit. She's got a bed up here so she can respawn here, and any time after we, we kind of help her out in Alfheim, she can always come back and visit whenever she wants. But what we've also done is made the place big enough for us to have a Botania enchanting setup up here. So we can come up here and use the Botania enchanting tools to kind of augment our armor a little bit better. So that's what we're gonna be doing this episode. We're gonna try and enchant my Terra Steel armor a bit better. And uh, and then we're gonna try and confront the Gaia Guardian too and see if we can take him on. So let's do it. All right, okay, princess. Now, oh, I see you put like a nice fancy carpenter's door on here. I know that you're pretty kind of handy with Botania. I hope you know a thing or two about Botania enchanting, because I don't really. I've been looking through the Lexica Botania, and, uh, well, it's, it's quite complicated. You dabble from time to time. I guess, like, you know about it, but you probably didn't do any of this hard work back in, like, Alfheim. You probably had, like, minions to do it. Did you, did you have a lot of minions back in Alfheim? A lot of slaves and, and little scrubs? Enchanters, right, okay, yeah, same thing, kind of. Uh, so what we're going to do is enchanting with mana, and there's a very specific setup that we need. Luckily, it details everything that we need on this page. And that's nice. It's nice to be able to have like a shopping list of items so you don't have to go backwards and forwards getting different things. It says here we need 17 obsidian, 10 mystical flowers of any color, 6 mana pylons, and a lapis lazuli block. That seems pretty simple, right? Um, on me, I don't have any of those, I don't think, apart from the lapis block. But let's head back to the uh, to the warehouse and things, and uh, and see if we can get the items that we need to do some Botania enchanting. Now, luckily, my ring is still powered up. There we go. One of them's down, but one of them's uh, oh, a little dirt as well. Oh, good point. Yes. Now I've stripped my terra steel armor here, as you can see, of enchantments. Uh, I just did that by making a new set because the only other way to, to strip them is, is through Thorncraft, so we don't have that. So what I did is I just made a new set out of some new Terra Steel. Right, so let's check out the warehouse. Now, we're going to need, if I remember rightly, from the shopping list, some obsidian. Now, I'm pretty sure I have obsidian in here. Oh yeah, 75. Plenty of stuff. So I'll just take half of it and put the rest back. Uh, now, what else does the shopping list say I need? So we need mystical flowers, mana pylons, and a lapis lazuli block. Okay, I've got to remind myself how to make a mana pylon. I've done it before, quite a few times. And it's simply a mana diamond, gold, and mana steel ingots. Okay, we can handle all of that. It's quite expensive, but we do have all the materials for it. And what else is in the book to do? Mystical flowers, no sweat. And, uh, and that looks to be about it. After the construction is done, use a wand of the forest, you've got one of those. Enchanted books, well I think the uh, the princess has been working on enchanting books for us, so we might be able to cherry pick our enchants using that. But what else? Okay, the rest is, oh, sparks. Sparks might be a good, a good thing for us to use. When enough mana is gathered, it looks like it's quite a mana intensive, um, intensive process actually doing all this, so we might need more than uh, the princess has with the... Um, with the Hydroangius setup underneath her tower. Well, all right, anyway, what I need is a few simple things. First up, gold. Let's check that out. Oh, there's none in here. Oh, weird, I must, oh, I remember seeing gold blocks somewhere. So that's definitely, oh, there's gold ore here though as well. A gold command baton. Got all kinds of junk in here. Oh, and an invitation by Lord Blackwood, man, memories. It's a long time ago. Let's put the blaze rods back in here at least. In fact, we can probably put a lot of our junk back in here, like the quartz and things. Oh, right, of course, we've got the gold's right here. Of course, right. Um, so I've got the gold. I'll need the mana diamonds. And what else? Let's see. For a mana pylon. Oh, of course, mana steel ingots. Now, we should have plenty of those over at the Botania warehouse over here. That's a bit of a worry, actually, because... El oh, man, look at Eldrafin's tower. From, from down here, actually, that thing looks amazing. Oh, yeah, I'm really, really kind of pleased with how that turned out. It's a really impressive build. Okay, let's grab mana steel ingots. These are normal diamonds, those are mana diamonds. We're gonna have to make a few of these into 
Wait, we've got two diamond blocks? Wow, we have loads more diamonds than I expected. I guess the quarry's kind of run its course, though. So it's got all of those. Uh, so let's see, it was a mana steel ingot, mana diamond and gold. Okay, so we just need, let's see, one mana diamond per pylon. We need six pylons, so I just need to put these three diamonds through the, hang on a sec, no wait, hang on a sec, a mana diamond, is that, is that through, no, if we send a, if we send a diamond through the portal, it becomes a dragon stone, what we need to do is put the diamond into one of these pools, okay, no sweat, there we go, yeah, just wait for the special sound that tells you it's a mana diamond, oh yeah, I love that, there we go, and three, and that is six mana diamonds, alright, let's make the pylons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bam! Six mana pylons. All right, so we're pretty much there. I'll grab some dirt. I'm pretty sure there's going to be some in here. Yeah, 67. So we've got dirt, mana pylons. We'll need some flowers. Uh, let's use... Uh, let's keep... Uh, I think... I like the mystical magentas. So we're going to use mystical magentas for powering this up. Ten of them should be fine. And I think that's everything we need. Okay, Princess, I'm going to meet you at the top floor, oh there you are already, on the top, top floor of your, um, or not the top floor rather, the uh, the middle floor I suppose it is, on your keep, on your tower. Now I reckon this is just about the right size for us to make the setup. Let's kind of count it out with the, um, with the book open. So the first step is, it's like a, like an iron cross out of obsidian. So I've got the obsidian in my hand. So let's put that down. We're going to have to put this in the middle of these pillars here. So it's like one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we need... Actually, is this too high? Maybe we should uh, dig this up. Yeah, I think we should probably dig this up. Oh man, this this this, uh, this en Enderium pick just digs through obsidian like it's nothing. It's so cool. All right, Princess, so what we're going to do, I think, is just dig a little bit into your house and uh, and put the obsidian in the roof. And don't worry, we can uh, we can always just um, just uh, add a layer of uh, slabs underneath it so it doesn't look too kind of, you know, obtrusive in your bedroom because we are actually digging into your bedroom now. Don't worry, we got this. Trust me, trust me. It'll look good, Princess. It'll look good, I swear. Okay, there we go. So this should be all the obsidian plunk down in this kind of iron cross. Okay, perfect. Looks exactly like it does in the book. Start by making an obsidian circle. Well, it's not really a circle, is it? But sure, whatever. And the next step, now this isn't a checkerboard. We don't have to put down any special wood here on the checkerboard. That's literally just to help you work out where you're supposed to put things. So we need to put mana pylons one block in the air where marked. So that is two blocks away from the sides of this circle. Now, because we're going to have to put, this is looking ahead a bit, but we're going to have to put flowers underneath these things. So we can uh, we can work that out by marking off these areas with dirt. So one, two, and then this is where the first one goes. And then we mirror it over the other side. Are you keeping up, Princess? You know how this is done already, I suppose. But, you know, I guess you can just oversee me learning how to do this. And then two blocks up and down from that point. So that's one, two, and then there. It's rare to see it done. Oh, I suppose, yeah, you have enchanters to do this for you again. So, like, it's already the, the already constructed facility. Oh, I guess there's loads of these like, just lying around Alfheim, just like enchanting places, if it's so commonplace. Okay, and then over here. So now what we need to do is put these mana pylons up in the air above, so that's what, here, and here, and I'm gonna assume, where's my dirt, here, there, there, and there, now does this all look correct so far, because, um, the obsidian's kind of sunk in, and I know we need to put flowers underneath. Okay, perfect, right. So now we put, let's have a look in the book. Flowers under the pylons and in the center. Oh wait, so we need quite a few of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Luckily we have exactly ten. Oh right, you're gonna put down the dirt in there. Good call, I missed that one. So there we go. Flowers over here. 
flowers, oops, over here. And then if I put down the dirt in the middle like this, flowers all around like this. And bam! Now, there's nothing to say that we've completed the multi-block structure yet. So, what's the next step? Place as oh right, a lapis lazuli block in the center. So that's on top of this, I guess, and we've got one of those here, luckily. Is this gonna complete the, the, the structure? There it is, is that the right place? I hope so. And now let's read the book. And the, after the construction is done, right click the block with a wand of the forest. All right, sweet, let's do that. Oops. Oh, there we go. Oh, nice. And it's turned the block of Lapis Lazuli into a mana enchanter. Oh man, look at this thing. And look, it's, it's the same magenta actually as, as all these flowers. I wonder if you put different flowers around the edge, if the little kind of sparkly blocks around the middle are different colors because it looks like it's matching the flowers around the edges. That's really cool, that's so cool. All right, well, how does it work now? Let's read the book. In order to utilize the enchanter, one would place via right click an item to be enchanted in the enchanter itself and drop enchanted books inside the circle around it. Items that are already enchanted can't be placed in the enchanter. That's right, that's why we stripped out our armor. To start the enchanting, right click the enchanter with a wand of the forest It'll scan the books around, and once it's done, a spell circle of sorts will appear around it, indicating the books can be safely picked up again. Wait, what? After the enchanting begins, the enchanter will require mana. It can be fed via one of two ways, either via mana bursts or nearby sparks, so regular mana ways. And then when the mana's gathered, the enchanting process will finalize and the enchantments will be applied to the item. Wow, this, this is really complicated. The amount of mana required depends on the rarity of the enchantments being applied, their level and the total amount of enchantments. If any book has more than one enchantment, only the first will be accounted for. Oh right, so books with multiple enchants don't work. And during the enchanting process, the item cannot be removed but it can be after the process has been completed. All right, cool. So if at any point, any component of the construct is removed, it'll revert back to its original lapis form. Okay, right, so this is all pretty confusing. Now, I guess you've done enchanting like this before. So what does it mean? If I right click on the block, there's, there's not, do I have to actually put stuff on the ground, like in the real world, not inside some kind of interface inside the enchanter? How does it work? And how many enchantments can I put on a single item? Doesn't say. So you put the item to be enchanted in the enchanter itself. Let's try right clicking with one of my pieces of armor, the, the helmet. All right, there we go, right. So I've right clicked and now it's floating in the middle. Okay, so that's what we're gonna enchant. And drop the enchanted books inside the circle around it. So the circle, I guess, is the obsidian circle, and we just chuck the enchantments. So how many enchantments can we fit on this thing? Well, okay, Princess, you said you've been gathering some enchanting books. Did you bring them up here? Are they in this chest? Oh, nice. Oh, whoa, there's, there's loads of really cool enchantments. Hang on a sec, can I enchant my sword? Because I've never enchanted the sword of Stinterfell or the Headhunter crossbow. It's got modifiers, but it hasn't got enchantments. Can we enchant these things? Can we add even more power? Don't know. Can we add enchantments to the, the bolts, maybe these headhunter bolts? That is, a, well tell you what, let's first up try enchanting the helmet that we've got in the middle there. So what's the best enchantment to put on this thing? Now I don't think this thing actually uses up the books that you put in the middle, I think it just borrows them. So let's see, we've got protection, feather falling, unbreaking, power, some of these are pretty much like weapons only I guess. Some of these books have a lot of enchants on them. I guess we can't use those. Oh, here we go, hang on a sec. The princess has thrown books at me. All <laughs> right, unbreaking, blast protection, projectile protection, fire protection, and respiration. All oh, right, so we can breathe underwater, that's cool. And then aqua affinity. Now I'm probably gonna have to make room for some of these in some of these books you're throwing at me. Hang on. Right, so these, I believe, will all work on helmets. So does that mean we can put all of these inside the circle and it'll put all of them onto the helmet? Is that how it works? What's the limit? 
there may be no limit. Okay, well, let's put these one by one on the blocks around inside the circle. Now, we've got to be careful because if we leave these on the floor, they will um, decay after five minutes. So I guess the, the, the key is to make this take no longer than five minutes. Otherwise, these books are gone. And there we go. Now, that's, that's, that's actually... Oh, whoops, that's not really on the right square. Pick that up. Now, there's actually, what, eight enchants here? And we've, we're going to put them all in the helmet. Right, now we need to angle some some mana at the enchanter. So how are we going to do that, princess? You've got your kind of spreaders here poking towards the, um, the mana pools here, but I'm not sure how full these are. Yeah, they're not very full. How are we going to get mana into the enchanter? Is there a way, do you think? Something above to generate mana. Oh, I'll tell you what, we've got this whole platform here. So we could create something quickly that will generate mana. So, and then sparks to transfer. Well, all right, so I'll pick up the enchantment books uh, so they don't decay. And then we, we can work out a good flower to use to generate lots of mana. Now, what we can do is we can just use, this is going to be an on-demand thing. We're not going to need to keep stocking up this thing with mana over time. So we can use one of the more powerful generating flora. What does that thing do? Cake is delicious. Everyone loves it, flowers included. Uh, is one of those cake aff... Yeah, okay, great. So it likes cake. All right, sweet. Let's make some keki murus. Okay, right, so we need pixie dust, a rune of gluttony, and a whole bunch of white petals. Top keck. Right, yeah, yeah, I, I meant that. It was totally an intentional pun. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm not so good at making these cakey flowers, but these are all the materials we need. If I charge you, Princess, with making the keki murus, I can go to the warehouse and gather all the eggs and wheat and stuff for making cake. So, should we meet back here with the, with the flour and the eggs? Actually, we're gonna need some sparks, too. We need quite a number, don't worry, I'll make, I'll make a whole... We got, we got so many eggs, so much wheat and sugarcane that making this much cake should not be a problem. Uh, Alright, Princess, so how do these go down? We're gonna need some dirt, right, to put these on. Oh, no, you got a floating island. Sweet. So, what do I do? Do I, if I just put the cake down, will it, uh, will it work? Now, the thing is, this is slab, not, not block, so the cake won't sit properly on it. But if I put this in the middle, is that gonna work? Oh, yeah, they're munching the cake! Now, how much mana is this creating? Oh, quite a lot, actually. These are, these are very hungry flowers, hungry for cake. Oh, that's pretty cool. And now will they will they put all of the mana into the um, accepting mana from items? Will they will they will are the Keki is going to feed this this mana pool? Because it doesn't look like they're doing that at the moment. How do we do? We have to bind them. We have to bind them, right? All right. So now it's time to what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig up these slabs, replace them with blocks, and then what we can do is we can put the cakes on top of those so they don't look so clunky. You have to move the spreader for the spark. Oh, right, yeah, uh, that's a good point. You have to move the spreader up a bit, I suppose. Oh, man. So how much mana has been created here? We've put down about, like, what, nine cakes now? So let's see how much that's put into the center pool. Not actually a lot. Where's the mana spreader gone, actually? Oh, right, the flowers are full. So now we need to put the mana spreader down to take them. Oh, did I grab the spreader? Oh, yeah, so I did, my bad. I'll tell you what, do you want to place that where you think it should go? Because... You're the expert when it comes to mana. In fact, if I think about it, do we even need a mana pool up there or sparks? We could just have the elven mana spreader taking all of the Keki Murus uh, directly and then shooting it down. Right, yeah, so the, uh, the mana spreader now is shooting directly down into the enchanting bay. So let's throw down some books that we have collected over here. There we go, now that's an enchanting block on every single block. Now this is getting very technical here. So, the process should have begun, right? Is this how it works? Oh! Oh, something's happening! Oh my god! This looks amazing. So how do we know how long it's gonna take? Oh no, when I right-click here, it shows, like, at the helmet. Oh man, this is- this is looking- this looks really cool, actually. But how long is it gonna take for all of these to fill up? This is gonna take a while. Alright, well, we got lots of cakes. So let's just fast forward to when it's completed. Right, so to speed up the process, we've added some more elven mana spreaders to the mix, and we've given them lenses of potency that should increase the rate at which they can shoot mana. And as you can see, yeah, this is improving the rate at which these flowers can eat the cake. But man, this thing needs a lot of mana to get anywhere near the end of it. 
So I'm a bit worried actually that the uh, the books are going to despawn. But if I hover over with the wand, we can see, ah oh, yeah, it's well on the way to speeding up. You can see a slight discoloration there on the color of the helmet that means we're getting enough mana now. It's still going to take a little bit of time to get through, but fingers crossed it should be over before all our books despawn. All right, so it's very close to completion. We just have to keep going up and feeding these uh, these plants more cakes. But yeah, once these this purple circle appears and, and the whole the whole animation starts and everything starts to you know kind of get under underway, the books that you put in the middle are safe to pick up. So we gathered them up and we put them back in the chest. So let's go and put some more cake down for these plants. Oh no, they're still working through the cake that we got up here. The others will be quicker without the helmet specific ones as well. Oh right, cool. So there's some enchants that, you know, just um, just will be, will be much quicker. Uh, that's pretty sweet. I guess helmet's the long one. All right, it's getting there very close. You can see there's a slight discoloration on the helmet. It's very close now. It's just the last couple of ticks. So let's just wait for this to happen. Oh man, I can't wait to see how awesome this helmet is. I think we are crafting the best helmet in the game right here. Just one more, one more little edge, one more little kind of pie section around the, around the circle. Here we go, last little bit. That's it! Oh, whoa, look at that animation! What, now what do we do? The, the purple circle... Ooh, can you hear that? Has it, is it complete? Yeah, the helmet's all shiny and stuff. Oh, all right, okay, the moment of truth. Let's see what this helmet can do. Oh my god, Terra Steel Helmet, Respiration 3, Projectile Protection 4, Soulbound 1, Unbreaking 3, Aqua Affinity, it's got, wait, hang on a sec, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, hold shift for more information, it's only got 5 enchantments on it, Will of the Ancients 4 of 4, 20% less mana cost on mana tools, and regen even if hunger isn't topped off, whoa, so I guess the, the maximum cap on how many enchants you can actually put on an item is, let's count this, 1, two, three, four, five. Okay, it looks like we chose kind of poorly because we've got Respiration and Aqua Affinity, Soulbound, Unbreaking. What I would have preferred, I think, is Projectile Protection, uh, Protection, and something else. But now, ah, oh, this is still pretty sweet. So let's put the Terra Steel chest plate in and upgrade the rest of our gear. Vroom, all right, and there we go. We've got a fully enchanted piece of chest plate. Nice, let's put this on, see what it does. Yeah, and this has got, oh, hang on a sec, no, wait. This has only got Blast Protection and Soulbound, but not the other enchantments that we put on it. This is curious, but if you know what we're doing wrong, make sure you say so in the comments section, and, uh, and I'll be able to find out what my mistake is. Well, let's finish up by enchanting our pants and our boots. For pants, I guess we definitely want, I definitely like the idea of Normal protection. Projectile protection isn't really that important, but normal protection's big. Right, and the enchants we're going to use for our pants now are Unbreaking, Protection, and Soulbound. Let's try that. Okay, and that's pants done. Right, and these have Soulbound, Protection, and Unbreaking. Let's put these back on. And now, finally, to enchant my boots. Now, boots are very specific in that they can have extra enchants like Feather Falling. So let's put Feather Falling on there for sure. But other than that, I think we want Protection, Soulbound, and again, Unbreaking. And there we go. And you know what, actually, listening to it, every time the uh, enchanter bleeps, I think it's detecting a new, ch a new spell, a new enchant. So it bleeped four times there, which meant it picked up four books, whereas last time it only bleeped three times, which must mean that it was picking up the three enchants we put down. That's pretty cool. All right, let's grab up these books and put them back over here, safe and sound. Now, while this is enchanting, let's take a look inside our lexica, because there's a whole bunch of treasures that the Gaia Guardian 2 can drop. Now, let's see. Alpha Mancy, is it in here? Ritual of Gaia 2. Now, is there any link here to all the loot that he can drop? No, we need a Gaia Spirit ingot to summon this guy, which means we need four Gaia Spirits and a Terra Steel. But what else? Relics of the Aesir. The one who rolls the dice of fate is to be rewarded with the gifts of the gods. Oh, weird, the dice of fate. How do you, how do you find those? I think one of these bosses drops the dice of fate. But what else is there in here? Ender artifacts? No, it's not that. From the Gaia Guardian 2. Right, ah, oh, so we're gonna have to kill the Gaia Guardian 2 until we get the dice of fate, because they sound like really awesome. 
Everyone you slay will drop a dice. Oh, right, and then you just roll the dice and see what you get. Oh, this sounds really cool, actually. Looking forward to this. Miscellaneous head creation. And there's so many things we just haven't looked at in uh, inside this. A world seed. It's a piece of elemental energized matter containing the ability to return its user to the world spawn. All oh, right, so that just takes you back to zero, zero, I guess. Spellbinding cloth. Absorb any enchantments. Oh, wow. So that's a handy way of just like scrubbing enchantments off of armor. We should have used that uh, instead of just recreating a set. And that just needs a mana pearl and some wool. Oldest item in the book. <laughs> Vine balls? Ladders can't stand up on their own. They require something on their back. But vines don't. Normally, though, vines aren't strong enough for someone to climb when they're freestanding. By combining a few vines, it's possible to create a ball that can be thrown to create a climbable ladder of strong vines where it hits. Oh, that sounds amazing. Like a ladder you can throw? Oh, we should get some of those as well. All right, I think our, uh, our boots are almost ready. All right, we're almost there with the boots, just this last little trickle, and then we can confront the Gaia Guardian too. Now, unfortunately, we used all our Gaia spirits making the Shard of Laputa. So what we're gonna have to do is we have to kill the Gaia Guardian one again, but it should be no problem, especially now we've got this amazing new set of gear, enchanted to the nines, with the perfect mix of enchants. Oh yeah, Terra Steel boots with all three, oh wow, four, yeah. Unbreaking, Soulbound, Protection, and Feather Falling. Let's slip these on. All right, now we're the ultimate killing machine with the Sword of Schinterfell, the Headhunter Crossbow, and a full set of Terra Steel. It is to quit my father very much. Oh yeah, the business, yay. All right, sweet. Well guys, thanks for watching. This time we confronted Batania Enchanting. We've got the setup here and it looks really sweet. It's easy to set up, but it takes a lot of mana. So I hope you have lots of cake and keki mirrors or a really solid way of generating loads of mana. Join us next time when we finally confront the, uh, the Gaia Guardian and the Gaia Guardian 2 and roll the dice of fate to see what it has in store for us. Until next time, guys, take care.